Now it's all well and good having lots of Ferraris, but I also have a family to transport around as well as lots of Ferrari parts to fix those projects. And well, this trusty workhorse Navara truck has got 220,000 miles on it now and it's getting a bit ropey, so I need to replace it, but I'm looking for something a little bit more tasty. Unfortunately, that is not local. Now here on the farm there are ample supercars scattered around in various states of repair but the one that has caught my eye is not a supercar it's a super truck. Now I've really wanted to replace my 2012 Nissan Navara high mileage workhorse for well over a year now. I've had it for three, I got it cheap but could this be the ultimate absolutely bonkers unpractical replacement for my Nissan? Let's check it out. So what we have here guys is the most impractical solution to my problems to go onto a British road. This is a Dodge Ram SRT10 with a V10 8.3 litre Viper engine. Let's have a look under here at the money shot. Now, ignore all of this mess here. This could all be fixed up. That V10 8.3 litre engine, well, it's from a Viper. Now, the unfortunate thing with this, and this is my dilemma, is the impracticality of this. 12 miles per gallon in the city, 21 if you're lucky on the highway, and 15 combined. Well, that is gonna cost a pretty penny to run in the UK. And I'm just trying to gauge how wide it is. It's really hard to do that on the farm, but would it be practical on UK roads? Okay, so to demonstrate, I am in my Nissan Navara. This is a Frontier in the USA, uh, basically the same size. This is the smaller version. You can get the Titan, which is a, a much bigger truck. But we are in a UK car park. It's a typical car park here. Look at the size of the spaces around here. And bearing in mind the, uh, the, the Dodge truck, the SRT10, is going to be a bigger truck than this one. Let me show you and demonstrate how much of a nightmare it is just to park this Navara in a typical UK car park. Let's find ourselves some space. Let's go for this one here. I'm gonna just demonstrate how ridiculous it is and how much or how little room there is around one of these. We've got a Mini there, we've got a Audi over here. Now I can get in the space, okay? But, I've got my nose right over there. So this is no exaggeration, as you can see, we are like nose to nose, same distance as the Audi, not even as far as the Mini. But if you come to the back of the car, and this is where it becomes extremely impractical. We are stuck out, this is, look, this is the arrows on the road down here cars to pass and this is just a standard Navara car sticks out a mile which is not brilliant and I'm pretty sure the Dodge Ram is going to be a bit longer but also a little bit wider and this is the problem with UK car parking spaces look there is a bit of gap there a bit of gap there anything bigger than this truck is going to be a nightmare it's just going to be too impractical for using every day but look at the styling on th this thing. It needs some work down there on the spoiler. Love the wheels on this. Obviously, the colour, well, the colour works perfectly with me. Uh, it's a very similar colour to the Rosso Corsa of the Ferraris. We've got a double cab, great for the family. We've got a really decent sized truck bed here. Got the two Ferrari wheels side by side, which I don't think I could do in the Navara. I think this is slightly wider, but about the same kind of length. Now it would be really nice if we had that cover, the missing cover to go on here, because if I had things like this in the truck and I needed to just leave them, even if it's for 10 minutes, it would be great just to have them secure. Now this area right here is gonna be my problem. 
we are going to be spending an absolute fortune running this truck but well life is too short personally as his mentor i've been trying to encourage owen to make changes to some of his less than healthy habits our video sponsor fume is on a mission to accelerate humanity's breakup with bad habits that consume far too many of us fume is a natural diffusive device that uses plant and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habit for a positive one Fume is not a vape, it is a non-electronic device designed to transform your negative habits. Instead of pods filled with potential harmful chemicals like a vape, Fume uses cores infused with plants like peppermint and cinnamon for delicious natural flavors. I really like Fume's new version 2 model. It's snappy and tactile. The high quality finish of the natural wood and perfectly machined metal gives it a premium feel. My personal favorite is the crisp mint. It's refreshing and really hits the spot. So head to tryfume.com slash Ratarossa or scan the QR code and enter code Ratarossa to save 10% when you get the journey pack today. The journey pack comes with three unique flavors, the new version two fume to help kickstart your positive habit. That's tryfum.com and enter code Ratarossa to get an additional 10% off your order today. Check out the inside. Perfect, we got the double cab version here. Now they do make a single cab version, but for me, I need this for the space for the kids. And well, it's the same configuration as the uh, Navara. Plenty of space back here. Something I really like is this slidey window at the back, which I can't open at the moment. There you go, slidey window. That's quite practical, we could use that. Uh, and then if we go to the front, it gets better still. So we've got a normal kind of setup in the front, but something that I really do like here is this. You've got a massive storage compartment, but you have the option of a third seat in the front of the car there. So really, really quite practical. Now this is what I'm trying to figure out is how big this is, how much wider it is. Would it actually work on a UK road? Now, as you can see, 94,000 miles is not exactly low, but well, a big engine like that, most likely not a bit of uh, motorway mileage, so I'm not that concerned about it. Now, being one of Sam's cars, it's obviously not perfect, and well, we're gonna knock him down on the price with this. Let's go through some of the things that it needs. Front bumper here, this front lower splitter has all kind of, it's obviously taken a hit at some point, so I don't know how easy it is to get one of these. It looks a little bit beyond a home DIY repair. We've got the bonnet scoop completely missing there. I believe there is some spares in this car. Brakes, these are uh, some pretty big brakes. They all need a nice clean up though. Look, they need to be repainted. The discs, they're all right. They haven't got any lip on them. Not bad at all there. Side pipes, they could do with a clean up. They look a bit rusty. Now the major concern for me though is the missing cover at the back here. There should be, I think it's a fiberglass cover that goes over the entire bed at the back here with a spoiler at the back and it's missing so the problem is can you get them how much are they and if i import this to the uk and try to get one after i'm never going to find one in the uk and if i try to then buy one and ship it to the uk look at the size of that thing it's going to be huge it's going to cost more than the part to actually ship it so I'm going to check out later just to see if they're available and how much they would be. And then it looks like there's something missing down here as well. Obviously, you'd normally put a number plate, but is that normal? Should there be a gap there? We need to check that out. Tow bar is missing. In the front here, we do have that replacement brand new reservoir bottle and along with some boxes and bags with some other bits. Now, the car has in the glove box here, the wallet with all of the books which is uh, nice and again quite unusual for any car that comes from Sam. Now a couple of areas on the car that do need addressing. These seats, this driver's seat in particular, the uh, stitching has all come apart. Other than that, not too bad. Very, very dry, starting to crack there. Now if you compare this lever, really, really dry, especially on the inside of this bolster, compared to the center seat, really, really soft, really nice there. That's because it's been set up like that. Uh, and then this, is it Alcantara or possibly kind of a suede trim on the center part of the seat? A couple of little burn marks in there. Uh, so, not too bad, but uh, this kind of thing is only ever gonna get worse. But otherwise, they're nice seats in this car. Interior wise, well, 
not a lot going on here pretty bland uh, no multimedia screen no parking sensors anything like that it's just just hard wearing and practical dash looks pretty cool with the white dials we've got a few functions on the steering wheel here but other than that really uh it's not much to look at randomly the radio has just come on uh for no reason whatsoever headliner all seems to be okay we've got a little bit of sag there there's a couple of bits missing uh we've got some interesting things going on uh but then we have other areas around the car that really need a little bit of work it's still got all the auction stickers on all the labels so it hasn't even been touched yet and i noticed down here when i shut the door all the trim pieces are hanging off now i might be wrong here but the car does look a little bit lower than it does stock and i'm led to believe that this has had some suspension work done on it which makes it a little bit more harsh a bit stiffer on the road now i'm not sure if it was just springs on this or shocks as well without taking it all apart and having a look it's hard to tell but it does look very very clean in there so certainly something has been changed anyway it's not horrendous it still drives great and uh, well it makes it look fantastic now let's take it for a little spin and see exactly how it drives listen to this let's put the window down Electric windows all round. Gauges all look good. We've got some kind of microphone here for the aftermarket radio system. No fuel in it, so we have to be careful. Starts first time on the button. Sounds amazing, those side pipes. Really, really, really sound good in here. This is not the kind of noise you expect from a truck. It's rather hot in here. I haven't got the aircon on. Let's check the aircon actually works. Now we're only going to take it around the farm because, uh, as usual in Sam fashion, there is no fuel in this car. That's nice. That's cold. That's good. But so you guys can hear me, I'm going to sweat this one out. So let's put it in uh, drive. Now we have a slight problem here. I'm going to show you that in this gear selection. If you look, that is right at the top, and I'm in reverse, it's not going into park. Same thing, we're going right down to the bottom and it's only in second. So, still, just won't hit that reverse. It will go into neutral first. And Sam tells me it's something simple here, hopefully with this selection underneath that we might be able to fix, but um, well, that's one of the first things that really needs to be addressed. As you can see there, I just cannot get it. That's right up in park there. Anyway, let's put it in neutral. Let's see if we can get this thing to work. To drive now. Break off. Lovely, lovely little burble back there from the V10. Now, Sam informs me that this thing is a little bit of an animal, can be very lively at the back. There's nothing, there's no weight back there. And uh, if I put my foot down in this, well, it could get a little bit hairy. Now that concerns me because, well, it's dry here in Florida. The roads are super, super slick, super warm and uh, the, uh, it's the best ultimate weather for having your tires stick into the road. However, in the UK, it's rarely like that. Midsummer, maybe. Otherwise, it's quite often damp on the road. So this could be a little bit of an interesting drive. Now I can't go 
it fast because we are on the farm and uh, don't want to scare any animals. We're going to test the suspension a little bit. I'm going to go on the field over there. We're going to be carrying a lot of parts. I mean, yeah, actually, uh, we have got the wheels in the back. I forgot about that. So we do have a bit of weight in the back of this one. And that's typically what's going to happen when he gets back home. We are going to be often transporting some of the parts from the Ferrari projects to and from my house to hopefully the new workshop that we're going to have. But this could be the ideal candidate to do that in style rather quickly. Well, the only the only style it's going to lack really is going to be my wallet. The biggest problem with owning a V10 5.8 litre is right here. Let's just check out the prices. £120 to fill the Navara. Imagine how quickly I'm going to go through that in the Viper truck. Now, as you can hear, probably could do with a little bit of a service. Sounds like uh, maybe one of the plugs is missing, one of the coil bags is missing, but listen to this. Now that is cool. Something I hadn't really thought about until I just did this is there's no reverse cameras, no parking sensors on this, and this for UK roads is a very big truck. So this truck actually drives very well, but it does need quite a bit of work on it, even though they are small little bits. A truck like this, well, those parts are not exactly cheap, so the price needs to be really good. And don't forget to get this over to the UK. I'm gonna have to pay a lot of money in shipping costs, probably around about two and a half thousand pounds to ship it. Then I've got to pay import duty and import tax on the whole cost. So that is the cost of the car with the shipping and that's 20% VAT plus import duty because this is an American car. So uh, it's not exactly gonna be cheap to do this. So what do you think guys? I for one love this truck. I think it's absolutely fantastic, but really, is it too unpractical to replace my daily workhorse, Nissan Navara? Do you know what it would cost him to bring this truck back home? You think he really wants to bring this home? If you do, let us know in the comments. Hold Otherwise, we haven't, we haven't discussed the price yet. I don't think it matters the price because- You heard that, it's free. The reason why I bought this truck is to take it off the road. This is very a, a, a pollutant truck. It's all bad. right, all right. That, 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 they would believe you, but I've just done a tour of all your cars here, yeah? And probably the, the smallest one is, well, apart from those two. Those are my daily cars. drivers. V8, 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 V12. No! The V12? V8. That thing over there, I can't say that. Well, the new V8s, they got twin turbos on them and really thick catalytic converters. Look, this, this video is too long already, yeah? All right, he dragged me over here to tell me something. He's been looking at this thing all day, driving it literally just back and forth to the front and the back. What do you want? You want to take this home? Okay, so once I crunch the numbers to find out how much this thing is going to cost me to actually run on the roads in the UK, the big question is, how much is it going to cost me to buy this thing? Look, you're a good friend, honestly. How much is it going to cost me to buy this piece of trash it's not yeah. a piece of trash no, you this saw really it. cheap truck. this is a good project it's got all the parts in the back i don't know if you showed them all that uh, in the trunk in the in the back seats it's got all the parts to repair it and i will tell you guys i paid thirteen thousand dollars for this truck but there were some fees on top of that and by the time it got here because it's a truck i'm in it closer to 15 if you want it for depreciation. real I, I look, not, it's the friendly depreciation you could have it for 12. i really don't want to work on it at this point, I've got a lot of other stuff as you've seen around here that needs tending to, and this one's just gonna sit on the back burner at least for a while. So 12, like you can have it. But if you guys want it at home and you're in the United States, I want 16. <laughs> I, I just, this is a friendly, he just detailed my car back there oh, for yeah. absolutely no reason. That's, I'm gonna crunch the numbers. We're gonna see if this is really worth me taking it home and replacing the Nissan, what is it called, my truck? The Fajitas. The, yeah, anyway guys. Let's see. Let's see. 12? Maybe. Maybe. Well, he just yeah. shook my... Did you just maybe. see? Yeah. You see how these well, English guys are? They yeah. shake your hand and go, maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Here in America, we shake hands. After that means it's a deal. After we deduct some fees, yeah? Get out of here. <laughs> anyway, you, guys. Yeah. 
I was going to do it for you. All right, you do it. Follow him because only one out of five of each of you watching right now are actually subscribed to his channel. I know that statistic because I hacked his computer earlier and was looking <laughs> into it. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and tell him to get back to work on the BBI. That's our number one priority here. And if three of you follow him, I get another 10,000 discount on this one. That makes it $2,000. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll just, yeah, bye bye. So I don't you want you to talk shit. As soon as I, the camera rolls, yeah. I don't want you, you just to talk shit. Hold on, this has to go higher. Yeah. And we have to get. You don't want our, our dicks in it. <laughs> if it dicks in the shot, it's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Uh, you know what chicks say to men with big dicks? What? Well, of course, you wouldn't know. <laughs> Fair you touch the front, it works. That's not touch screen. Is it? Yeah, yeah. mine. On, on you the, just did like please. one of these numbers. <laughs> I can't even remember what I got to on this video. You can't right, say let, let, <laughs>